In this video, I wanted to look at a couple of aldol and aldol-like reactions in context to explore the aldol reaction in a little more detail. And firstly, I wanted to take a more detailed look at the retroaldol reaction of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which occurs in the midst of glycolysis in biochemical systems. This reaction is enzyme catalyzed and the enzyme is generally a very large protein. So what you're seeing in this image is the protein structure with this long sort of stringy structure corresponding to the protein backbone. At a particular site within the protein structure we have the active site and this is where the actual chemical reaction occurs. Here's a zoomed out view of it and here's a zoomed in view and within the active site you can see the substrate or a substrate analog as the case may be sitting in the active site engaging in intermolecular forces with the enzymatic side chains. These side chains facilitate the reaction and we won't go into the details yet but I wanted to show this in context to illustrate that this reaction is carefully controlled within the enzyme's active site by these side chains, which you can think of as kind of the arms that are orchestrating molecular level events within the substrate. Now, if we turn our attention to that substrate, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, this is a carbonyl compound that is a beta hydroxy ketone, and so it can undergo retroaldol reaction. It's a useful exercise to build synthesis skills to find the beta hydroxy ketone and draw the product of retroaldol reaction based on the structure of this compound. So let's do that first. The carbonyl group in fructose bisphosphate is located here and recall that this carbonyl group is associated with the nucleophilic component of an aldol reaction. So this ultimately is going to accept electrons in the reverse direction in the retroaldol direction. With respect to this carbonyl group, the alpha carbon is here and the beta carbon is here. So in thinking about the retroaldol reaction, the elimination process, the bond we're going to break is this one between the beta and alpha carbons. And the oxygen and carbon involved in the carbonyl group after retroaldol reaction are associated with the alcohol in the substrate for retroaldol reaction. This analysis shows us that the bond in green breaks and we're going to push the electrons this way to generate initially an enolate or an enol, which tautomerizes to a carbonyl compound. And so one of the components that forms via a retroaldol reaction looks like this. And just to help us correlate the atoms in this with the atoms in the starting material, here is the portion highlighted in red that we find in the starting material. Turning now to the portion highlighted in blue, elimination of H and the portion highlighted in red establishes a carbonyl group between O and C right here, and the remainder of the structure looks like this. So whereas the starting material for the retroaldol reaction is a beta hydroxy ketone in this case, the products are the corresponding ketone and aldehyde, and the ketone here acts as nucleophile in the opposite direction, and the aldehyde acts as electrophile. The top molecule is called dihydroxyacetone phosphate. It looks like acetone with a hydroxyl group on one side and a phosphorylated hydroxyl group, or just a phosphate group, on the other side. And the second molecule is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P. It's glyceraldehyde with a phosphate group linked to carbon-3. Depending on the organism and the specific enzyme involved, this mechanism can happen a few different ways, but one I'll just illustrate quickly here involves an imine intermediate. The substrate forms an imine with a lysine side chain in the enzyme, and this gets protonated to form an intermediate iminium ion. This iminium ion is a nice leaving group, and provided we have a basic residue somewhere else nearby the beta hydroxyl group, the presence of the iminium encourages an elimination process that amounts to retroaldol reaction. And so an elimination like this gives rise to an enamine leaving group, as well as the CO double bond that we find in the aldehyde product. After hydrolysis of that enamine intermediate back to a carbonyl compound, we end up with G3P that came from this half of the elimination and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which came from this half of the elimination. Nucleophiles other than enolates also participate in aldol-like additions to carbonyl compounds. 
we've seen previously that when we attach a saturated carbon bearing a hydrogen to an electron withdrawing group, which has this general structure X double or triple bond Y, where Y is more electronegative than X, this acidifies this hydrogen. This makes this hydrogen fairly acidic. And what that enables is the formation of a nucleophile, an anion, at that carbon. And so carbons adjacent to electron withdrawing groups can participate as nucleophiles in aldol-like reactions. And that's what we're seeing in this example of the nitro-aldol reaction. Instead of using an enolate, this reaction uses an intermediate in which a carbon alpha to a nitro group is anionic. So imagine a proton transfer occurring at this carbon, which from the perspective of the nitro group looks like an alpha carbon, right? This carbon is alpha to the nitro group. Deprotonation there generates an anion that's resonance stabilized. And I won't draw out the resonance structures, but if you draw out the full structure of the nitro group, you'll see that we can delocalize the electrons here into the nitro group. The important point here is that this intermediate is enolate-like. And so like an enolate, it can engage in aldol reactions. In the presence of an aldehyde, such as benzaldehyde, notice that this is a non-enolizable electrophile, meaning proton transfer by this alpha nitro anion to form an enolate is not possible here. Thanks to that, nucleophilic addition to this substrate occurs selectively. In other words, it acts as electrophile selectively. And this forms what is ultimately the conjugate base of the product with negative charge on oxygen and a new bond formed between the alpha carbon, the carbon alpha to the nitro group, and the carbonyl carbon of benzaldehyde. Acidic workup converts that alkoxide into a neutral alcohol, and this is the nitroaldol reaction. So really it's just a nitro analog of the aldol reaction in which we're still adding to an electrophilic carbonyl in a ketone or aldehyde, but the nucleophile is now not an enolate, but an enolate-like alpha nitro anion.